Hi guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to Happiness Colours Kirby Rosans. Today I thought I'd just show you a bit of a colour I'm going to do at the moment as um, part of the Kirby monthly challenge which is metals. Um, I'm going to be walking, working, not walking, um, in Kirby's Imagimorphia. Um, the page I've been working on is the anchor. Now I've loved this page for a long time and I always fancied doing it in the, in an iron colour but a rusted iron because obviously if it's been under the water it's going to be very rusty. I'm not fantastic at picking my own colours and things but I've had a go and um, what I did is, just bear with me a second, I went on with you hopefully it'll be a bit more behaved now so using the black what I just do is just go very lightly into <coughs> the darkest areas and he's very jealous this dog and he at the moment he's having a problem with me coming up I'm coming what to do come on then. So yeah, like we're saying, with the black, just go very softly, not heavy handed at all, and just fill in some of that area with the black. So again, I'd go across here, the top of here, where it's coming down, and adding that shape in, so we still keep emphasis on that shape, and again, just bring a little bit of the black into there, and again, on this corner bit, just bring the black down but then obviously we want it to curve there show a little bit at the bottom okay so it's hopefully still keeping that main shadow where we want it there okay so then we'll go in with the colors again bringing them all in and blending them all a little bit together so again back to number 263 just go over that black I tend to go around the outside first and then do use my scone balls, mixing that colour together, bringing it out a little bit at a time. Again, over black just to blend it in. to number 193 taking it onto that little section there a little bit into that outer section to the bottom just bring that dark section see it kind of starts like blending into that colour. The best things with these as well as these polychromos I found you can add quite a few different layers. So now we're going into the 188. Exactly the same. I don't think my colour the way I colour is you know hard. I think yeah I do find the easiest ways of trying to do something and Obviously, you guys, with your comments you've, you've given me and my pictures and stuff like that, you have really, really helped my confidence and stuff. So that's why I thought I'd come on today with, a, you know, with something different and just see if I can get that iron looking. Rusted iron. Then we'll go back into our lightest colour, which is the terracotta which is 186 i can only see the name on this one not the number so 
so I say to me cut them. So just go all over those colours, making sure you cover all the whites of that area and on the whole outside and brown that little bit there, blending all those colours together. And also bringing those colours down. So it's just really showing the different shades of a rusted colour really. Although it is classed as rusted iron so. And there you go. So that's how I generally have been colouring this section. So we'll keep, keep going on. Like I say we'll go on to the different areas and hopefully I'll be able to complete this while we're on so hopefully I won't bore you guys too much I hope I'm zoomed in enough so you can see let me just see if I can bring you in anymore is that better hopefully hopefully it's not blue I'll try and keep my books on an angle so my camera's on an angle because I tend to colour an angle so we'll do these two side little things first we'll just do one at a time so again with the darkest colour, number 263, let's go over the top where Kirby's added his, doing them both together, seeing they're only small parts. We'll just add that colour over where Kirby's added his, the darkest. The next colour is the 193. So what I do is just bring that up a little bit and just extend that on either side. Just a little bit, not too much. So we want to, you know, try and fit all our colours in if we can and blend it out. Um, number 188. The reason I go over it twice as well is with the colours because obviously if you think there's too much light area in one area you, you can fill that up on the second you know the second as long as there's some colour laid down on there so to me I'd like that section a little bit darker so we get that on the next coverage if you just like mapping your colours out really <coughs> so now we go in with the black like I say and then we just go over that area not too much black don't want too much coming into it but we do need that little bit of extra darkness on the page so then in with number 263 as we're going in with the black we're just bringing that colour out that little bit further and bring it, we'll try not to work too I think I've gone in with that black a bit too hard there I am a quite a heavy colour as well, so I find it hard sometimes to go in different, you know, layers and stuff like that because I do tend to, like I say, go in a bit too heavy handed sometimes. So I'm trying to teach myself to use a, a lighter hand, but then I can get more layers than I already do, like I say, I am, you know. I do get quite a few layers down there but I do need to still try and use a little less and finally back in the terracotta to those lightest areas and the burnish down. Now I know lots of people are going to say oh well this isn't you know quite accurate because obviously you know rust grows wherever it wants to grow but I am still trying to keep the highlighted areas it's just a a nice colour really and at the end of the day it's what we're happy with isn't it just wanted to come on and show you um, this page hopefully I will do all this page on camera as well with you guys um, it might be in different sections um, <clears throat> like I said I don't want you know keep it that long if I can help it I'm just going to go on doing these sections now exactly the same as I did on the previous section so rather than keep talking you through it I will just you know colour in have a bit of a chat with you 
Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you had a fabulous Christmas and New Year. I um, didn't do anything really. I seen the children and my my well my daughters and um, my grandsons on Christmas Day. We was we um, all at it. my daughter's Katie's and um, her boyfriend, which was really really nice. Um, we got to saw Jace and Chloe my other daughter and then Brody, the baby of the family with his first Christmas so that was nice as well and he had um, sat at the Christmas table with us as well him and Jace were at either end of the table and wearing the Christmas hats and Brody kept in all, all the time really for a five month old baby I thought that was pretty cute really he looked super and um, with his light golden Christmas hat on and the meal was lovely um, I was just gutted um, that since, like I said a minute ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes. Um, I've been put on medication now and I'm losing quite a bit of weight with it. I can feel it in myself. Um, I got diagnosed beginning of this November and just before, I think it I'm not too sure of the dates now, but in December, I obviously had to go to see the nurse to see how I was getting on with the injections, and I was quite surprised. I knew I had lost weight. I could feel it in myself and my big girls, so if you lose some weight, you do tend to feel it. And obviously, with me having walking issues um, through back back injury from years ago, I found I could like walk the dog a little bit further without being in pain. Um, so, you know, I knew I was losing the weight. And then I got on the scales and I got them with the wrong colour then, not through talking. Sorry, that colour should have been this one, so I'll just go over it. I will be going over in other sections, so I can bring this colour in there, but I put my lightest colour in. I do try to keep my pencils in order, so I'll just pick up the next one, but unfortunately I've put it down wrong. So this is the lightest colour now and just going over everything I've done there so yeah sorry about that um, as I was saying I went and got weighed and I'd lost 15 pound in four weeks um, the nurse was quite shocked she asked me to get off the scale and get back on again to make sure they were right um, I was hoping they were right straight away as soon as she said that so I'm now the lightest I've been in about oof, seven or eight years um, again, I've been carrying on with the injections and they are suppressing my appetite, so I'm not eating as much. Um, mine tends to be through boredom that I tend to start picking and eating, but I don't buy those things in anymore. Um, Katie's, my daughter's been fantastic. She's been preparing meals for me because I'm not one for cooking. I just think, what's the point in cooking for myself, really? It's, I know it should do for your health and eat all the right things but sometimes I think when you're on your own it's a bit more thingy to get into actually cooking something so she was a bit of diamond and um, doing me different meals I'd buy my shopping lists in and you know all the ingredients and she made me some fabulous meals we've had um, chicken casserole uh, not chicken casserole sausage casserole which is absolutely it's gorgeous um, then we've had chilli and spaghetti bolognese and chicken curry and for each one she made me we put she put them all into you know like like servings so I could just get it out of the microwave and then cook the pasta or cook the rice what was ever good you know what I'd fancy with it that particular meal and then just do that and it's, it's, it's worked out brilliantly it's, you know I'm eating far better now as well and enjoying the meals as well rather than thinking oh what's today and you know I'm not really looking forward to it I've, I've really been enjoying them actually so um yeah I've, I've been enjoying them and like I say it comes Christmas day and I'm there I didn't eat all morning I didn't have a breakfast because I knew we'd be eating um a big meal and it comes to the meal and I managed to eat the meat because we had turkey and beef um, absolutely gorgeous 
are then um, I have my roasties. Obviously, nobody can, you know, roast potatoes are just the best thing, aren't they, at Christmas? Um, so I ate them, and then we had um, apple pie and custard, <sighs> apple crumble and custard. Sorry, um, me and Jack had that. We were the only two who fancied it. Nobody else fancied anything. So me and Jack had that, and I was horrified. I could have eat. I, I left some. Um, Katie said they didn't want to bring it home with me and by the time I'd like off and hard and everything there was about four or five mouthfuls left so I didn't do too bad um, and then I didn't eat again for the rest of the day so it has really helped me with my appetite what I want to do is I just want to go in here as well I didn't add a shadow there would be a slight shadow there so I'll just bring that out a little bit and I think there would have been one there as well until the light is come on this one so we'll blend it all in again here comes trapping again this puppy is turning into um, being a little um, diva I'd say he was fantastic could do anything you know sit here and colour for as long as I wanted and then as soon as I put the camera on nope he wants me, I think it's because I'm talking to you guys and I think he thinks I'm losing the plot um, talking to myself or I'm talking to him because there's only me and him here so I think he wants to get involved that way bring all those colours together the lightest one There we go, I know I have gone on to the white bubble, the white sea thing, so I'll really just get my eraser out. If it will work. I've been having so many problems with this this eraser. There we go one second. I keep thinking it needs new batteries, but I only put new batteries in it the other day, so I'm sure it's not unless it's been got broken. There we go. So just gently go over the, now I've gone into that area. So I've just gone into there, so what I'll do is get my darkest colour and just bring that into there. There we go. So that area is all burnished. Now we can see a little bit white there at the end. I've not quite caught. I wouldn't have been able to see that a few weeks ago with my eyes the way they went. I was real panicking. Um, just seemed to go over a few days. One minute I was alright and then next minute I noticed I couldn't really see the lines and it was like, ah. Right, so I'm going to come to this area. Now what I'm going to do here is you can see I have just left a little bit. Um, oh no, you can't. I'm miles away. Sorry. Here. As you can see, I just left a little bit of a highlight as if that was where the iron was going through and I didn't want to do it on every single section because you know it just look a bit so I just want to do it in random places so I will leave a little bit here on the top or maybe this middle section um, here so I'll go through that with you guys so first of all taking the darkest is 263 I am new to this colouring on camera as well so um, I, I don't want it to be that I just colour with music in the background. I want to keep it real time and just really go through um, the colours I'm using and how I'm blending and laying them down. Because, you know, there are there are new people out there who want to learn how to colour. Um, obviously, when I was colouring, I was obsessed with um, Karen from My Colourful Country Life as a hundreds and hundreds of other people and also um, colouring with Kay. Um, Kay introduced me to bringing different mediums to the page which I never thought of once I've been colouring for a few months and also um, Debbie from Colour Me Stress Free so they were the three main people that I actually watched and I picked up colouring skills from 
each of them, everyone colours different, There's, you know, you will get two people who colour the same, but in saying that, it's how you prefer to colour, do you prefer to put your darkest colours down first, um, do you just go straight in with your colour, you know, as hard as you can, and just burnish the colours as you do, or do you do them gradually? and build the colours up so there's no wrong and right way. The next colour I'm going in with is 293. Um, the only thing I would suggest is always try and keep a sharp on your your pencil as sharp as you can. And then um, you know you can get into the smaller areas, especially on this this particular picture, so, you know, because of the like where we're placing the shadows and so this is my second darkest colour and I'm just bringing it out a little bit further than I took my last one. Bring it around the edge here a little bit. We will be going into the second layer of them all so you don't have to, if you think, oh I'd prefer it, you know, a bit darker there. Um, you know, you can do that. The only thing you can't, well, I suppose you can really think if I needed a little bit lighter, you could always rub that area out and, you know, bring it in a little bit more where you want that lighter area. So like I say, I'm going to try and work it so I leave an area there for like where the irony colour's coming through. So I'm happy with them colours where they are at the moment. And then I'm coming in with my lightest colour, again, just going on. Over the previous colours, and then bringing that colour in there, and that's like the kind of shape, not much of a shape, but we'll do it in a minute as it is. So, coming in with the black, and we're going for the um, main shadows now. So, I'd seen the main shadows being here, and then obviously, just working from this end and just bringing that that colour out there, going across this line, bringing that black into that line there, going over that just to make it that little bit pronounced is it? I think it's the word pronounced. So that's where the two darkest areas are going to be there. So then we'll start going back in from darkest to lightest. So this is number 263 and this is my final time I will go over with it. So what I'll do is I'll just blend that black into 293, go along where the darkest areas have been put and just pull it out again. Just like we did on the first section but obviously we didn't use the black in the first section. Um, a lot of you can use the black the first time round if you want. You can just do this in one coat, you know, in one one swift colour um, but I prefer to do this in two because I'm trying to build the colour up and trying to make it look like a rusty you know colour I'm going over it twice at this particular time which is you know so we're going in with the second darkest now and like I say I'm just going over all those previous lines and just as before bringing them out that little bit further so bring that shaded area out with the different colours that black line there towards the bottom I want this area darker I didn't really go dark on that section before so I just want to go with that area darker and I think they want this bit darkening up as well at the top this middle section is obviously where I want the hint of iron so I'm not going to go up as much with that one. So to the third colour 188 so again just going all over these colours into the sections bringing them together so wherever the darkest there is now I'm just burnishing all those colours together now and just leaving that dark lightest area where I want the terracotta to come in and then all I'm going to do is just bring the terracotta up to a certain area and it's basically that's just a white piece of the page that's there 
but what I'll do now is, in that white area, this is a Prismacolor PC938 white. I don't know why I use this one, I just use it, I've used it in the past and it's a really good white, so, um, for blending out. And then all I do is just go over from the centre and just pulling it out. And just go over and it'll just very, very bring them colours covering this thing. And just work it out like that. So yeah, that's how I did the areas of where I want the iron to show. Okay, so that's where we are up to now. What we've done. What time is it? Yeah, we're doing cracking for time. Hopefully I'll be able to get this done. So I'm going to work on the... Let me just pull you out. And then hopefully... Um, You'll still be able to see. What I'm going to do is just work on the main area of the hook. Um, these, what are going around here, I'm going to try and do in a different colour. Um, I might do them in silver or something like that. I'm not too sure yet. Um, and I think it's the rope. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, so it wouldn't be um, a silver or anything like that. It'd just be a, a rope colour. So I've seen the, this page done before and it's been done in like in similar colours to the anchor so um obviously I've just realised it won't be the same colour so put my white to one side so we'll start working down I'll just do up to this section first round here because like I said I don't want to get too far ahead of myself so the darkest areas go over to the darkest colour so yeah um told you about my Christmas it was it was nice I come back and um, me and Dougie just chilled out watching a bit of telly and then just, you know, toddled off to bed. Um, when I go to bed I always watch YouTube and catch up on, you know, everyone who I follow, all the the people I love to watch to see what, you know, if they'd uploaded any videos and things like that and I just re-watch videos as well of mainly people colouring Kirby and just picking some tips up off um, people really. Um, Nico, Nico Sim um, is a lady I've started watching recently and <coughs> she does some of the most fabulous Kirby pages and I mean fabulous if you've not watched her already um, please go over to her um, YouTube channel because she does do some you know fabulous pages with Kirby and she's a lovely lovely lady as well um, she you know if I need help or something like that if i'm not too sure about something I, I can ask her and she'll help me more than willingly um also with someone who wanted to say a thank you to was kirsty from kirsty coloring sketch um on one of the last videos i'd uploaded somehow i don't know why or how but he wouldn't let comments come through and she very very kindly dropped me a message on instagram saying your message you know your messages are turned off and i didn't have a clue what I'd done or how I'd done it, but apparently it's something that, you know, can happen on YouTube from now and again. It automatically just unlocks your comments so no one can leave comments, which I was a bit shocked at really, because you'd think they'd want people to leave your comments to, you know, so you can pick up on things. I don't know. I'm not too sure how YouTube works. I'm just grateful for everybody who, you know, pops on and please watch my videos. Um, you know, it is nice to know that I'm doing okay. I'm not doing making a total hash of things. Um, I'm getting more confident now in, like I say, in colouring the pages. <coughs> and obviously, this is going to be my main first one. My other early ones where I didn't have the setup properly. The camera was on the table. It was shaking everywhere. Blah -de blah -de blah so hopefully I'm past that now and hopefully this is a lot better um, than the first ones were. So this top area here, what I'm going to do is, the shadow I think would come in here above that little bit so I'm just going to work in there with my darkest colour, just bring that round a little bit and then I think I'll fit the one might want to get three of the colours on this one but and then what I'll do is I'll just jump to my lightest colour and blend them in together 
just to show that it is, you know, in kind of a shadow. So what we'll do now is we'll go back, and this is where I add my black. So here I've just noticed I'll add a little bit of black in here because there is a lip there showing that the, it is a, you know, some kind of... like a lip but maybe it's one of them what comes down and I don't know I've never seen an anchor up close I don't think I'm not going to look at my reference picture because like we said before it's our pages and we colour our pages for fun really there's no right and way wrong um, with it I've heard Debbie say a few times from Debbie me stress free there's no right and wrong way it's not as if Kirby's gonna get you know email you and say well you've done that wrong I didn't want you to do it like that these are our books to create as we want and this is just how I want to how I see my page you might you know see it just doing it and I in colour and stuff like that or however you like and if you do you know find this colour along helpful at all if you think oh yeah I won't mind giving that a go myself and you know just give me the thumbs up on the video and if you're new please subscribe Um, the more subscribers I get obviously you know it does give me more confidence and I know people are interested in um, maybe watching me um, colour and see how I interpret um, Kirby's pages because we, like I say we all see them different if you you only have to look at the um, Kirby monthly colouring um, tag that I've got on. Like I say, this month it's um, metals. Um, but if you look at like last month where it was snow, so many of us coloured similar, very, very similar pages and everyone's was different. I just think it's brilliant that we can, or like I say, all colour the same page, but very rare to two people will get the, the same colours exactly they may all look you know obviously they've all you know got snow on them so yeah everyone's done a bit of snow but the actual colours for the rest of the page and even how people colour snow it's just unbelievably different and it's just so good to see see i love doing the compilation video where i put everyone's pages um from what they've added onto the hashtag um, and I put them into my completed pages video at the end of each month because I just really appreciate everyone taking part in the themes video. It's not something I expected to take off as done, but so many people, um, even Kay from Colouring with Kay, um, she did a picture of a leopard. She shows it on her completed pages video and she even said I inspired her, her to get her Kirby books back out. And, that's what I want people to do. Kirby's pages are just brilliant. His imagination is, you know, just so brilliant. And he's doing these pages for us to colour. Um, so, you know, all I want to do is to get everyone to get your Kirby books out. If you've not coloured, if you're watching this and you've not coloured in a Kirby book for a while, get your Kirby books out. You know, everyone loves colouring in their Kirby books. Um, you know, I've seen so many people, like when he brings a new book out, everyone, you know, wants to, you know, get on and, like, colour his video. You know, you get loads of colour alongs, but his older books seem to get forgotten about now. And um, apart from um, Nico Sim, who I said before, she still colours in a lot of his older books. And there's just so many beautiful pages um, that he's done for us to, you know, to to colour so I don't want my page just to be all about his new one like obviously when his new one comes out in um in March um yeah I'll you know I'll be doing a flip through and stuff like that and hopefully but I just won't colour in that that one book I've still got what he's got nine ten, maybe twelve well no but nine or ten books out um Past this yeah this is still so this bit's still going to be in shadow here um so he's he's still got all these marvelous books and um i said marvelous and a bit pushed into marvelous 
Um, he's got all these fantastic books still out and there's still all, you know, pages that are there to be coloured. So let's join them together and if I can inspire you to colour a page like this because obviously I picked metals this month. Um, you know, and you haven't coloured a Kirby page for a while. Come and join us, see, you know, join in with the fun with us all and share our pages and then hopefully, you never know, <laughs> miracles might happen. Kirby might just, you know, see the colour along and think, oh yeah, you know, he knows his books are loved and stuff like that. But obviously he said um, Alien World is going to be his last one for a while, which, you know, but I can understand that because he's, he's getting so much commissioned work at the moment and stuff. So, you know, he's going to concentrate on that side of things and, you know, where... Uh, the money is wouldn't you if he was that talented um he's got shoes out now he's got all sorts of his shoes look amazing um but well well out of my price range i'd love a pair of the shoes just I, I don't think i'd wear them i'd just hang them on my wall probably or put them in me um coloring area in my living room i can see me having a lot of curvy stuff on these walls in the next 12 months um, I've also as well um, one of my friends on Instagram she got his um, jigsaw for Christmas which has been out ages but it, she just reminded me of it seeing it and she'd completed it and it just looks so brilliant and um, Julie on Instagram um, it, it just blew it at first I thought it was a page she'd coloured um, and then I remembered her saying that, you know, she'd got the jigsaw for Christmas and she was eager to get that done. So, but seeing it there, you know, all dawning in its glory. And so hopefully I'm going to get that. I have seen it, found it on eBay and it's a really good price actually for a jigsaw. Well, for something Kirby in my eyes anyway. So um, I'm going to be ordering that. So when I've done that, I'm going to frame it and, and get it put up um, in me colouring area like I say I want to there's a lot of Kirby pages that I've I have coloured um in the past and I'd love to have another go at them obviously as we practice our skills do get better and stuff and I'd love to have another go at the few of the pages and maybe if I, I like them that lot enough because it's a second book I can always remove the the um copy and you know take it out and frame it but if i do any of that i'll let you guys know well you'd let you you'd probably know anyway because i'd be over the uh, moon if i created something that i thought was good enough to be put on a wall so yeah um what else is there so yeah uh, you will notice with me as well i am one of these people who start saying one conversation and then I start talking and it goes into another conversation and then half an hour later I might come back and just start randomly talking as if I've not finished that one's conversation off. Um, it's my memory. Hormones getting to that age now. My kids, you know, take the mick out because I'm always forgetting stuff. Or mum, you said this last week and now you're saying this. And I don't believe them half the time. I think they're just playing me, but when they start all, you know, all saying that I've said it in different conversations, you have to start believing them, don't you? So, yeah. So, my body's going through quite a few changes at the moment, like you say, the diabetes, the HRT. But, I'm still here, and I'm starting to love life again. That's why I decided to go ahead and start doing, you know, my YouTube, um, because I just love Kirby so much, and I know so many people do, but there's not just, I noticed there wasn't, you know, when I'm going through YouTube, everybody colours everybody, don't they, you know what I mean, it's not just one person like myself who colours just Kirby. I'm just looking at this bit here, that'd be... Yeah, it's still start part of the, the anchor. I didn't know if it was part of something else then. So, 
yeah, that's why I started the YouTube channel, really, just because I'd put Kirby Rose hands in, and it just takes you all over the place watching, you know, videos um, from years ago and stuff like that. You know, some of the older videos are brilliant to watch. I, I love watching um, Dee Dee Willingham, her older videos, and um, the way she creates pages are just unbelievable. But she doesn't do as much colouring, I don't think, now, or of Kirby pages. Not that I've noticed, or if it is, it's mainly the newer books um, that a lot of people still tend, you know, tend to focus on. But I like his older work as well. Still, there's still some, like I say, some brilliant pages for us to colour. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going over all the previous. Uh, this is my first coat as well. So if I decide that like certain areas should have been done, so I will put the black in there to enhance the, the shadow. Which I think there's going to be a few bits on this page, but I'll see when it comes to it in a second. Just trying to figure out this bit now, so that's the curve. What's that bit? That's the leaf there. Then, is that a wash of water? May yeah, wash of water maybe coming up. And take the uh, them lines are coming up there. And them lines are coming up there, but they're coming down there. Or does the anchor go to an arrow at the bottom? I thought an anchor just went up like that. But I'm not too sure now if it goes further down. So if this bit and this bit is part of the... No, I can't see it being, because that's... If that was coming round, it wouldn't meet that bit, would it? So I assume that bit there. I don't know. I'll just leave that little bit for now, because I'm not too sure. It's one of them things where sometimes when I'm colouring something, I won't just you know, assume it's it's right, I'll stand back and look at it and think about it, try and figure it out. If need if I'm not too sure, I'll look at some other people's coloured pages and see how they've interpreted interpret in, you know what I mean, how they've done it really. Because I'm not too sure about that and I don't want to commit to it and then think but I am thinking it must be because these there yeah, it is because these come round here and then that's been so I'm taking it this bit down here is going to be some of the anchor not too sure if that's that wash of water though where that comes round if that's the I'm not too sure I'll just leave a light mark there and I'll, I'll have a look into it and we'll do our colouring what we've got to do today and then obviously next time I come on which will probably be tomorrow now. Um, whether I load this picture up to you today or whether I just come back, um, you know, and do it in sections in the one part. I'm not too sure yet what I want to do. It depends whether I feel like, you know, doing a little bit more later. I can only sit down for so long and colour before um, I start feeling pain. So bit here is going to be in darkness so I'm just going through now with the black where I think there'd be like a shadow under places so obviously underneath this fish here it's going to be darker and underneath his fins a little bit you can feel my leg now starting to dither because I'm leaning on my my other leg with my arm. Just change position, sorry. That's a bit better. So, from the octopus tail, we'd have a shadow there coming in. want to darken these lines up a little bit here because it is quite a big area to 
Yeah, the area so if I bring the darkness down a little bit, obviously the colours are gonna blend together a little bit more and I won't have as much light area if that makes sense. That would be darkness this little bit here. Um, the darkness would be underneath all the top. So here would be a bit of a shadow and here. And then I think I'm not brilliant on shadows, I'm not I'm just put a little bit there, like I say, I'm not too hundred percent about that bit, so I'm not going down that road guys, but let's do this side of an S I can run through it all. See, I do shout at myself as well sometimes when I'm not really concentrating. And then this thing is in shadow here. I'll come up there. So what I'll do is, I will do the things, it's going to go over an hour, but I will do the bits coming up here, and then I'll leave this bottom, take the pencil out of your mouth, um, yeah I'll do these two arrows coming up here on either side, that arrow there sorry, and that spike there, and then I'll we'll do this bit next time. Um, I come on, I probably will load this video up tonight because I want to know what if people are actually interested in watching it um, and to see, you know, what everybody thinks if it's worth, you know, coming back on and carrying on doing it, which I hope, you know, you do like it, then I know where I'm going kind of thing, what we're doing and I will find out as well in the meantime about the arrow, the um, anchor if it does come down. So all I'm doing now is going over where I've done that black and just blending that out with the first colour into that area there because that area would be a little bit darker. So I'll come from the top and just pull that black down. If you notice there when you're going over and we're pulling that black down, work it into those areas. And just make these lines a little bit thicker, bring them out a little bit more. That area would be a little bit there. I know I keep going over the lines, but I will rub them out before I come to do them. It's not something I think it's just because I'm in an awkward position and my pencils aren't as sharp as I'd usually have them, but it is a bigger area so. I'd rather use the colour than sharpen it away because polys are expensive. I've not had to replace them yet, even though the dog ate them. I've not had to replace them yet, so I'm not too sure. You know, I know you can get them open stock um, and stuff like that. I noticed as well the other day on Arteza that you can get the Arteza pencils now in open stock which I was really pleased about. Um, the only thing I didn't like was that you, have, you get three in a pack. So if you say you wanted a new red, um, you get three reds. So I don't understand the thing behind that. I suppose, I suppose it's damn sight cheaper getting three new reds than like I had to do where I had to buy a full, full new box <laughs> just because I needed the um, caramel brown, which is my favorite color in the Artesas. I love that caramel brown. So we're going to our second darkest one. Oh, just bear with me one second. <coughs> He's not usually allowed to play with them, but while he's fussing now, he wants one of the um, the gnomes. I love gnomes, and I have a couple on the television. And there's um, a furry one. Um, that he managed to get the other day, I don't know how he managed to get it, jump up at it, or Jace may have um, helped him out there, I'm not too sure, but 
he loves playing with that so while we're on here we'll give it into play no no he wants my attention again all i'm doing is bringing these colors out a little bit more into the other areas right what to do come here, come here. come on Sorry about that. He sat on minute again for a, for a minute or so. He'll get fed up and get back down again in a minute and think, right, well, that's not very exciting. But to save him barking and to save me, I'm having to stop colouring. I want to try and get this section at least done. So, yeah, just bring your, your colours out. Work on your colours until you're happy. So you're happy with how they're looking. So I'm going into the third colour, so our third shade again, which is 188. Again, just bringing them out. So work along. Stay still. Stay still, I'll get down. It's worse than having a flipping baby sometimes. I thought to myself when I got him, oh, get a little dog. He was so cute. Which he is. He's absolutely adorable. But like I, I think I started to say before and got, got lost in my conversation. Um, he turned one on the 29th of December. And he's turned into a gremlin. I don't know, know why. He was one of these dogs where he'd be, you know, so cute and just lay though, not now. He's into everything and wants everything. And wants my attention all the time. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So I'll just go in with the last colour now. And because I'm happy with it and I don't want to work any more areas. He's in scumbling colours take that colour and just go over it all into the lightest areas he's basically just burnishing it um, with your lightest colour that's how I do tend to it's very rare I will use a white um, you, you know a lot of people We'll use um, a white or a blender pencil um, I don't use blender pencils if I wanted to blend something without using the lightest color to blend it I would um, use a q-tip an earbud um, they they work brilliantly um, you know if I just wanted to like keep the out not use a lighter color like I'm doing now I'd just use a blender and blend them all together but because I have got this lightest colour and you can use it over all the areas yeah, we colour out. I, I hope you can see what I'm doing I hope I've not kept my hand in front of it all this way and I hope well you'll know whether I like the video because you'll see it if not I'll be trying again I have also been working on a, another page which I'll show you in a minute when I've done this one. Um, it's a colour buddy that I've got with a couple of the girls on Instagram. Um, before I did the U, started the YouTube channel, um, we did quite a lot of buddy colours together, me, Gina and Julia. Um, lovely, lovely ladies and dear friends to me now. They actually encouraged me a lot to start. I kept saying that I wanted to start a YouTube channel but I wasn't too sure and uh, they just said go for it what, what you got to lose which is nothing at the end of the day isn't it all it is is my time um sorry about the messages what are coming through just bear with me one second should have put my phone on silent just bear with me one second I 
my daughter Katie to say my Christmas present had finally arrived. <laughs> she was gutted on um, Christmas Day. Um, she's ordered me something. Um, oh, you're getting on my nerves now. Um, she'd ordered me something and it hadn't arrived. And I know it's off her and the children, as I did say. Not to bother with Christmas presents this year, because obviously, you know, having a baby and first time on moving into her first house, she's got enough things to spend on. Right, this area now, what I'm going to do is this me Just bear with me one second. What's that you doing? What do you want? Hey, what is it you want? Are you bored? Yeah? Okay, right, sit still. So, like I say, these here, they, they go down, don't they? So this bit here in the middle would be the lightest area. So, obviously using the darkest colour, I don't know if you can see his nose there. Hopefully he won't get in the way, but hopefully he'll be quiet. So, what I'm going to do is, just go, let me sharpen my pencil. You think that is a, you know, pretty good point, but I just want it a little bit more so I can get all those thin lights. And the pencil sharpener I do use as well. In case there's anyone interested, it's just a manual handle one. Um, E Dale, I think it's called. Something Dale 133. Um, I got it off Amazon. Um, it's brilliant. It does all my pencils, even the Square Brute Fooder um, pencils I've got. I have got, she says, as it's got no end in it. Oh, there you go. It's going to play up on me now, isn't it? Yeah. And as it goes, I don't even know where my other pencil sharpener is. Just bear with me one second while I, <laughs> while I sort it out. Bear with me, guys. Sorted now. Yeah, what it was was the tip there. I don't know if you can see that. I'd come off in it and I'd just stayed where it was. So I just had to. It's quite easy to do. All you have to do is release the black, black handle, just turn it, and the whole barrel comes out. And then you just release the um, edges. So, sorry about the noise. Let me just use this. So, yeah, throw that tip away. Dougie's just sat on the floor now staring at me, so hopefully he'll think I'm talking to him. So, yeah, um, what I'll do is, is this line here is on either side of that would be the darkest underneath here. So, obviously, down there. And then up around this area, and then round there. So obviously the darker area is going to be down here, um, where Kirby puppy's not going to give up, is he? Right here then. What did he say? What did he say? Don't work with kids and dogs. I think it's true. Um, so yeah, that part of the fish, so it would be around here, and obviously that would be in darkness because of the shadow there, and then there would be a slight shadow maybe, what's that, is that just a fish's body or something hanging out because it's got a, a tail, but where's its head? Have I seen things? I'm not too sure, but we'll go with it. Ah, it's that one there, that fish, and then its tail's coming over. I thought we had a headless fish then, Kirby. So, pull it down here. And then just bring that down lightly. And then on there as well. Don't you stop licking your arm. these colours up and that one will come up as well from there. You can bring colours up as long as far as you want, as far as you feel, you know, as you want to. What's that bit now? Is that coming from there? I'm not too sure. The anchor's not going to go up there, is it? Oh. 
So you do get some of these pages where you do have to stand back on Kirby. I even do it myself, as you can see. You, you think you, you know you're colouring one thing, and and you're not too sure. So the best thing to do is stand back and look at it and see what you think till you. You know you can colour it, and if it's wrong, it's it's coloured wrong again. It's, it's like I say, it's your book. It it doesn't matter. So I start from here. So that bring in the second darkest colour in to the bottom there because they're going to be in the darkness so I'll do that and then colour from here and up that line I'm just going to ignore their marks at the moment because I'm not too sure I think it's part of that plant or something or maybe it's that's not the fish maybe it's something with legs I've not got a clue And if you know what that is, guys, if anyone's looking at this page and you see, let me just zoom in a little bit more so you see. I turned you off then instead of looking in, zooming in. Sorry. So, let me see. Because it's annoying me now. Sorry about this. So I'm looking at this part here on the fish. You've got the fish, what obviously goes underneath there. And then you've got the octopus what comes round and then we've got this here I can see a body with a fin coming off it yeah and then it looks like it's got legs coming off it and then no head so then I was thinking it's this fish what comes round maybe flips over but why would a fish be that longer than have legs so I'm not too sure Maybe it's one of them hidden things. Oh, there's a crab on that side, so maybe it's some kind of crab life form. I haven't got a clue. I couldn't tell myself. And it's not like I know the rope goes round there. But it's not going to be part of the rope with legs on it, is it? I don't know. Well, we'll cut all that bit when it comes to it. We'll just get back on with this side for the moment. So... I hope that's not too blurry as I'm colouring and I hope you will keep you in at that for a minute see how it goes so bring in this is my second darkest colour and we'll just bring in up the shadows and like I say just doing scumbling motions over it and leaving a little bit for you know lighter colours so we'll just bring in that first colour further down into that shadowed area. Sorry about this. He's getting cheeky, aren't you? That would have some kind of shadow on there. Underneath here. Bringing that point out further. Because again, they're going to be shaded areas. And this bit up here. So, like I say, it's come. So then we'll go on to third. So, so this area in here, obviously you're not going to see any of the lightest colours there. And what I'm going to do is just use this as the last colour on this darkest side here. So where I brought the colours down, I'm going to actually use this as my last colour on this side. So I'll just blend all them colours into each other, bring that down, and then again here. I'm going to put the dark, this third colour into these areas, into the lightest. 
Now, obviously this is just my first layer, so I'm not like pressing on hard to burnish. But then with this colour, I'm just going to come up very lightly into that area. Because that would be where the lightest colour tends to be. And again here, just extend these colours coming up. And just flick it up like that, because that's where the lightest colour would hit. And then again, bring that out there. Into there. So then I go in with my lightest colour and again just go over all the top, making sure the colours come in together, especially on this side here. Also, because this is where you will see the terracotta come into play because it's the lightest colour and then here on the top bit. Now I could actually leave some iron mark there if I wanted to. Let me just get my rubber. So I'll just do a bit of a bigger area this time. So we're going to say that's the iron area. So I'll just go around to bring this colour into it. But Just leave a certain area there. Okay, so let's go in with our final black. So we're going for the area, so we're working on this side. We've done that side. So down here is obviously going to have shadows. This side here. Our weird animal, whatever it is. And across this line here, going up there because that marks like the edge of the like the top bit where it comes and then goes down. We've got our curvy lines there, so obviously he guides us, doesn't he? Those curvy. I think that's why I've only ever coloured his books. I can't say I've coloured um, any books. There are some books out there that I'd really love to have a go at, but I don't really want to get into buying lots and lots of other artist books you know and stuff like that Rita Berman her books look brilliant um, I have actually been gifted um, a couple of her books but I've still never coloured in them because I just want to focus on Kirby um, he's who I started with I started my colouring experience in um, May 2020 it was my birthday like I say started me colouring there, I've gone too far up with that, I've gone too far up with that black line, so you can just get your pen, your rubber, and I know it rubs out a few, you know, a few previous colours, but we can sort that out, don't worry, so this tail here, I've just put a bit in, put a shadow there, so we've come down this side with the shadow as well. want to try and make sure that it's it's arched up but I'm not too sure if that's how you do it like I say I'm still learning myself I'm still not you know I don't know everything I'm nowhere near experience there's a lot, a lot of people who are on here and I'm not teaching anyone how to suck eggs with my colour and I'm just showing people how I would do it if they were interested in mainly to show beginners that these pages you know they, they are fun to do yeah sometimes you know you can have a bit like i was there i wasn't too sure um which part was which i'm so sorry about the dog guys he's driving me putty. i don't know about you and i hope it doesn't make you want to turn off if you just bear with me we'll just finish this section I don't think I'll do the other side on camera now. I might come back in a little while and finish that side off. Um, give my back a break from this chair. But we'll finish this side first. So that's the first colour, darkest colour. And then we're going to come in and all on this area here. We can burnish that colour in. Bring in this one down. And again in this section here bringing it further, further down, and then bringing it round into this 
this area. Just bear with me. <clears throat> trying to find, you've got all these toys to play with. Absolutely loads of toys, but until you show them him and give them him. No, he wants me. It's because I'm talking. I think he thinks I'm talking at him. Oh, silly dog. It's not as if I can put him out of the room because he'll only back and there's only me and him. And so I took him on a long walk before I started filming because I started filming and he just wouldn't let up. So I thought, right, take him for a long walk. You might have more chance next time and then nope he started again and usually he's fast asleep by now it's like having a baby isn't it you know the sleeping routines of when best to <laughs> to film so third colour like I say I'm just going in really and just going over where the darkest areas have been make sure no why is that area not Bringing all them colours together, then bringing them out into, now like I say I wanted to keep this area here, so I'm just going to bring that colour in around, still keep that colour on that side from what I erased out by accident. This area would be darker, and then again, burnish those colours in, in there. Coming up to this side. These pages can take so long to complete. Well, they can for me because obviously, you know, I love going in for the detail if I can and stuff like that. And I'm not too sure if I'm classed as a fast colorist or a slow colorist. Or to be honest with you, it's my way so I'm not you know it's how I want to do it and how what makes me happy and that's all you know that should matter but I just want to be able to do a page with you guys so I can show you my process and show you how I colour now I'm using the lightest colour so again go over everywhere just really give everywhere a burnishing in now with that lightest colour all on these sides I will do a background on this page as well. What I'll do is, I don't know how many parts it's going to be in. Um, so I, you know, I hope you do, you do like it, and if you do, you know, if you do watch it. But I, I try not to do it in too many parts. I, so I keep thinking about how many parts is it going to be. I don't want to have like a fifteen-part <laughs> picture because I just know nobody would watch it. Even though I'd, you know, if somebody, you know, interests me in the way they're colouring, and if I can pick up. Um, things off there it wouldn't matter how many um you know parts it was if it was a picture I fancied doing with them or like if I watch Karen um from my colourful country life her videos are you know tend to be quite lengthy um I think she must cut them into different parts because I couldn't personally sit there for that long and colour on a picture. So again I've just got my Prisma white now um I just